If you only tune into cable news, then you'd likely have no idea that Saudi Arabia is currently carrying out a genocide in Yemen with our weapons and our government's approval. Now, they've been committing atrocities there for quite some time, numerous atrocities on a daily basis, but after they decided to bomb a school bus, they're finally getting some much-deserved media criticism. As BBC News explains, at least 29 children have been killed and 30 wounded in a Saudi-led coalition airstrike in Yemen, the International Committee of the Red Cross says. The children were traveling on a bus that was hit at a market in Dayan in the northern province of Sada. The health ministry, run by the rebel Houthi movement, put the death toll at 43 and said 61 people were wounded. The coalition, which is backing Yemen's government in a war with the Houthis, said its actions were legitimate. It insists it never deliberately targets civilians, but human rights groups have accused it of bombing markets, schools, hospitals, and residential areas. And this story in particular is especially disturbing because they, they targeted children. But really, it's just one of numerous examples of the atrocities that continue to occur in Yemen that have been completely ignored by the mainstream media. This isn't this isn't new. It's been happening, but nobody is talking about it. Now, as Adam Johnson of Fair Rights for Truth Dig, it's actually been more than a year since MSNBC even mentioned Yemen. He explains, on July 2nd, a year had passed since the cable network's last segment mentioning U.S. participation in the war on Yemen, which has killed an excess of 15,000 people and resulted in over a million cases of cholera. The U.S. is backing a Saudi-led bombing campaign with intelligence, refueling, political cover, military hardware, and as of March, ground troops. All of this is happening in the so-called liberal news network that's supposed to represent the left, that's supposed to be the liberal equivalent or Democratic Party equivalent of Fox News, it's not even mentioning these things. This is a 24-hour news network, and they couldn't even find two minutes of any one day for the past year to dedicate to Yemen, to inform their viewers about the atrocities Saudi Arabia is committing with our weapons and approval. They've failed us. The mainstream media has absolutely failed us. They've failed the American people and they've failed the people of Yemen. They're supposed to be informing us about these things. That's their job. And they haven't been doing their job. But thankfully this week, after we got the report of them bombing a school bus and killing 29 children, finally, one MSNBC host decided to cover it briefly. Chris Hayes. And he actually did a surprisingly thorough job. If I were to stand here on this broadcast and tell you that a foreign power had bombed a school bus full of American children, there would be no bigger story. We would be in a state of panic, horror, and mourning, and almost certainly immediate war. In fact, the thought experiment doesn't even work because if that had happened, you wouldn't need me to tell you about it at 8.45. You'd know minutes after it happened. Well, today, a foreign power did bomb a school bus full of children. Only it was Yemeni children, and the Saudi-led coalition that did that bombing is backed by us, by the United States. The images you're about to see are extremely disturbing, and it's because a school bus bombed in a crowded market was left utterly destroyed, resulting in the deaths of at least 50 people, and most of them are children, and injuries scores more. According to the authorities in the Houthi-governed Sana region, those are the rebels who are fighting that war in Yemen. The Red Cross says its medical team has received the bodies of 29 kids, all under 15 years old, and is treating dozens more injured children and adults. This attack is part of a U.S.-backed, Saudi-led war in Yemen. And it began during the Obama administration. It has intensified under the Trump administration. It has prompted what NGOs call the biggest humanitarian crisis in the world, and I quote here, with indiscriminate and disproportionate attacks on civilians, denial of access to humanitarian aid, and the use of starvation as a weapon of war. Now, the horror of this specific attack prompted a howl of outrage from Democratic Senator Chris Murphy. He wrote, U.S. bombs, U.S. targeting, U.S. mid-air support, and we just bombed a school bus. 
The Saudi UAE U.S. bombing campaign is getting more rec reckless, killing more civilians and strengthening terrorists inside Yemen. We need to end this now. He's right. Our government, our public dollars are paying to kill Yemeni children. And it's our government and our representatives that can stop it. That was that was great. I want to see more of this from Chris Hayes because he's he's proving to us that he actually has the potential to do a good job. I mean, he actually covered um, Israel killing Palestinian protesters who were peaceful back when Trump decided to move the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem. He did a good job covering that. And now he's showing us again that he does have the potential. The question is whether or not he has the will to keep the pressure on here. And I understand what a ridiculous time we're living in. It's actually news when mainstream media does their job and covers the news that they're supposed to be covering. Media is truly a powerful force. They have the ability to set the agenda and shape narratives. Could you imagine the profound impact they'd have if they talked about Yemen just half as much as they talked about Russia? It would literally save lives because Americans would start to become informed and ask questions and begin to exert pressure on government and the White House and Congress. They'd be forced to speak up and start taking action. But because mainstream media prioritizes other things that are less important, like Stormy Daniels, like Russia, well, what happens? Politicians are essentially forced to pursue what they think Americans care about. And that's always dictated by the mainstream media due to their agenda-setting ability. This is really... It's concerning that MSNBC hasn't talked about this for a year. And Chris Hayes, if he knows how important this is, if he did such a fantastic job covering it, credit where it's due, you've got to talk about it more. It, we, we've seen that certain hosts have the ability to set a standard that other pundits have to compete with. Since Rachel Maddow saw a surge in ratings when she started focusing nonstop on Russia, what happened? Other news hosts started to talk about Russia more frequently. So if if Chris Hayes can focus on Yemen and create the standard, he alone can have such a huge fundamental impact. But, I mean, he hasn't talked about it up until recently. So this is this is one of those stories where even if we're talking about it, if Democracy Now! is covering it, if The Real News and TYT are talking about this, well, it doesn't really matter because some people exclusively watch mainstream media. And if you exclusively watch mainstream media, if you go to an airport and CNN is on, I mean, that is essentially what's going to dictate the level of salience certain political issues have. So, I mean, they've got to cover this more. I'm glad that Chris Hayes felt compelled and convicted and wanted to cover it, but we need to see more of this. There needs to be more coverage of the United States and what they're doing abroad while we're all not looking and paying attention because it's certainly morally reprehensible to say the least. And it's not going to stop unless people actually start to care. But before they can even care, they've got to know about it. And that responsibility falls on mainstream media. And they're just, they failed us here. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.